In the early 2010s, DreamWorks Animation had a problem. Their artists were creating increasingly detailed volumetric effects, like smoke, fire, clouds, and so on. But the data was massive, slow to process, and hard to manage. Traditional volume grids just couldn't keep up. So their engineers built a new solution from scratch, and they called it OpenVDB. It wasn't just a new data format or a trick. It was a complete overhaul of how volumetric data could be stored, accessed, and rendered. OpenVDB gave artists the freedom to simulate and manipulate complex volumetric effects without tanking performance, and DreamWorks made it open source. From Houdini, Max, to Blender, and Maya, everyone in the visual effects industry started using this technology. So why is OpenVDB this important, and how DreamWorks helped change how everyone works with volumetric effects. Before we continue, the Blender market is going through the spring sale with 25% off thousands of products from add-ons, courses, 3D models, and more. And if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of some of the best add-ons and courses out there. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. OpenVDB's development began at DreamWorks around 2009, led by Dr. Ken Musef, who had a background in physics and computer physics R&D. Musef had previously worked on similar techniques and novel volume data structures. For example, he co-developed the dynamic tubular grid for level sets in 2006. Upon joining DreamWorks in 2009, he spearheaded an internal project to rethink how studios handles volumes specifically DreamWorks, which is an important part of their production pipeline. Early prototypes were presented in technical talks as a dynamic block grid, which is an approach that was introduced in 2007 and improved over the next few years. Between 2009 and 2011, Musath and his colleagues had evolved this into a hierarchical block data structure dubbed DB plus grid, which combined the block grid idea with a B plus tree indexing scheme. I know this is a complex jargon, but I hope it gives you an idea. Just to clarify, a B plus tree is a type of tree data structure commonly used in databases, in addition to file systems to store and access stored data efficiently. This version was the direct predecessor of OpenVDB, initially called VDB, short for Volumetric Database, or sometimes jokingly, Volumetric Dynamic B tree. During development, the core team at DreamWorks included three key co-developers, of course along Dr. Musef, Peter Kuka, Mihai Olden, and David Hill, all of whom are credited as primary authors of OpenVDB's technology. Together, this team refined the VDB data structure and integrated it into studio production pipelines. Within a few years, the new system proved its worth. It was first tested on complex effects, where the prior methods struggled. For instance, DreamWorks Effects lead Brent Burley recalls that with OpenVDB, they could overcome memory limits that previously constrained detail in volumetric scenes. The team rapidly adopted OpenVDB for feature film work, and it became a key technology of movies like Puss in Boots in 2011 to create cloudscapes and beanstalk to cloud castle sequences. Also in Madagascar 3, for large-scale effects, like mist and smoke, and it was also used in The Rise of the Guardians in 2012, helping with the ethereal Jack Frost magic effects. These early successes validated the approach and built internal momentum behind OpenVDB. Again, one of OpenVDB's first big triumphs was creating the majestic volumetric clouds in Puss in Boots in 2011. In that film, a giant beanstalk grows into a swirling cloud kingdom. In this specific scene, without an efficient sparse volume format, things would have been prohibitively heavy in memory. OpenVDB allowed DreamWorks to store and render those clouds with unprecedented detail, a single volumetric model that might have consumed half a terabyte as a dense grid was reduced to only a few hundred megabytes, which is a huge difference. This dynamic gain meant that VFX teams could include far more detail and nuance in volumetric elements than before. Likewise, 
operations that once took hours or had to be split into chunks due to memory limits or sped up by orders of magnitude. I'm talking about things like, for example, converting a fuel simulation to a polygonal mesh. One internal benchmark saw a 30-minute mesh generation task drop to about 10 seconds using OpenVDB, which is an incredible difference. These improvements were game-changing for the effects department, allowing them to meet directors' visions for richer effects without technical compromises. OpenVDB saw relatively rapid adoption in the VFX and animation industries after its release in 2012. DreamWorks Animation's reputation and the open-source nature of the library helped gain traction very quickly. Major studios like Pixar, Wada Digital, and Industrial Light & Magic in addition to others began incorporating it into their pipelines because it solved significant challenges related to volumetric data, as it is expected. Its integration into popular software such as Houdini, Blender, in addition to Maya and Max accelerated its adoption because everyone basically was using it in their major software. The efficiency and flexibility of OpenVDB made it extremely important for complex visual effects, which I think contributed to its widespread use in the industry. And the good thing after it became open source, its evolution accelerated with the help from separate parts of the wider industry. So over the next few years, all major VFX and animation studios began using OpenVDB in some capacity, and most 3D vendors incorporated it as I said, by 2014 to 2015. Onodesk Maya and Max could import and export VDB volumes via plugins. Blender added OpenVDB support in 2016 for handling smoke simulations, and other tools like Cinema 4D, Katana, and Clarice adapted it as well. This widespread use meant that studios could easily share volume data, like cloud assets or simulated caches, and they could do this in a common format across different software. OpenVDB also continued to improve through open collaboration, which is a great thing by the way. DreamWorks kept a core team on the project for a while, but new contributors from other companies joined the effort. For example, developers at SideFX Software contributed significant enhancements and new features to OpenVDB after using it in production, so they bottle tested it and came back with great feedback and improvements. The open source community added capabilities like OpenVDB points for storing point clouds in the VDB structure for things like particles, and optimized tools for collision detection, particle meshing, etc. The project maintainers ensure that contributions met the high format standards, so OpenVDB stayed state-of-the-art. Around 2016, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences took notice of OpenVDB's impact, and they honored its developers with a Scientific and Technical Academy Award in 2015 for the creation of OpenVDB. Recent years have seen OpenVDB improve and keep pace with new demands. One significant achievement was NanoVDB, a GPU-friendly adaptation of OpenVDB developed by Ken Musath, the original developer, after he moved to NVIDIA. It was announced in 2020. NanoVDB provides a lightweight representation of VDB volumes that can be copied to graphics card memory and ray trace or simulated in real-time context. This was actually a response to the growing need for GPU acceleration in volumetric workflows. For example, interactive previews of smoke or faster path trace volume rendering. And by late 2021, OpenVDB 9 integrated initial GPU support, showing the project's commitment and improvement over time. And today, OpenVDB is truly an industry standard. But how can you use OpenVDB on a practical level? You can do that by simulating fire or smoke, for example, using a tool like Houdini. The simulation generates volumetric data, representing the density, temperature, and velocity of the fire and smoke. OpenVDB stores this volumetric data efficiently, allowing you to save and load large and complex volumes without consuming excessive memory. You can then import the OpenVDB file into another software, like Maya or Blender, to integrate the effects into your scene. And then your rendering software can help you shade and light the volumetric data, adjusting how the fire and smoke look, depending on the environment, 
And then in the final render, you're gonna have a realistic scene with high quality volumetric effects. And by the way, there is another alternative called Field 3D, an open source library developed by Sony Pictures Imageworks. Field 3D was created to store and manage large files, I mean volumetric datasets, similar to OpenVDB, but it hasn't seen widespread adoption. Generally speaking, voxel-based systems like NanoVDB, which we just talked about, and Field 3D serve similar purposes, providing efficient ways to handle sparse volumetric data. However, OpenVDB remains the most popular choice due to its robust feature set, community support, and integration into the industry standard tools. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.